This is the transmitter that we used. It's a Spectrum DX9 transmitter. This is the data link module that sits on the drone itself and it is the um, piece of hardware that's responsible for communicating with the base station. Um, like I said earlier, the newer drones have this capability built right into them so you don't need to purchase this hardware in order to enable waypoints. This is the ground station hardware that's on the ground and it communicates to the data module that resides on the drone and it also communicates to the iPad through Bluetooth. The uh, small piece at the bottom of the picture is the Bluetooth module and the uh, rectangular piece with the long antenna is the uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, module that communicates to the drone. This is the DJI F550 drone that we use for making both the flights. As you can tell, it's, it's an older drone. It's about three years old. However, it's a very stable platform, very reliable, and um, that's what we uh, decided to use to make this particular video. This is a dual diversity display module that was used. This receives a video real time when the drone's in the air and it allows the homeowner or the inspector or whoever to uh, see the video as it's being filmed and if something unusual or interesting appears on the video uh, they can instruct the pilot to go in and get a closer look real time instead of having to go back later. So what exactly are waypoints anyway, and why are they useful? Waypoints allow you to have your drone fly a predetermined route automatically. This is extremely useful if you want to fly a grid pattern, for example doing a roof or crop inspections. Flying an accurate grid pattern by hand is actually somewhat difficult. You should also realize that not all drones support waypoints, and some drone manufacturers say they support waypoints, but don't allow you to pre-program the flight. These restrictions require you to fly the route first and then program the waypoints. If you want to use pre-programmed waypoints, then you should verify with the manufacturer that the drone you're interested in purchasing does in fact support pre-programming the waypoints ahead of time. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is actually program the waypoints via the iPad. So here's live video from the iPad that's being recorded. The first thing we do is we launch the Ground Station app. That'll bring up a Google Earth interface. Once we uh, can zoom in on the house that we want to drone, all we do is tap the screen where we want the drone to fly and uh, program our route. As you can see as it's being programmed it'll show you the distance of each path and in this example I'm trying to make the grids about 20 feet apart and uh, we've got to sp sped up now to save some time but showing the, uh, the path that's actually going to be flown. We now want to save the uh, the actual route and in this example I'm going to call it inspect2 so I click the save button and then uh, type in inspect2 and hit OK and now it's saved. So now I've saved the waypoints we're now at the property we want to shoot all the hardware is ready to go the iPad, the drone, the transmitter the next step is to load the saved waypoint route into the iPad So we launch the ground station program again. I'll go into the uh, template selector. I'll say custom templates. We've got several templates already saved, but the one that we saved was inspect2, so I'll select that. And that falls right exactly under the house. If it uh, didn't quite hit right, you can move it around. You can also resize. And so 
the, uh, the route's now been saved, but I have not programmed an altitude. So what I'm going to do now is manually fly the drone up and see how high I need to have the drone fly to make sure it clears everything. In this case, it was 65 feet. You can see the little red triangle, that's the drone itself. I am telling it to fly 65 feet and at 2.237 miles per hour. I now hit the upload button, it's transferring the program to the drone. Waypoints. Waypoints. The iPad actually announced that the drone is now flying under waypoint control. So now the drone is flying autonomously but the uh, pilot is observing the drone at all times and if necessary can take back control. So as you can see as the drone flies the route the distance from the, uh, the target is displayed, the altitude is displayed, uh, how far it is from the pilot is displayed, so a lot of information. And you can see the height, which we programmed to be at 65 feet. The drone is doing a very good job at keeping it uh, at 65 feet, plus or minus about a foot. The wind was a little gusty at times, um, so that's why the, uh, the altitude is varying as much as it is. The video that the drone is taking is also being sent back in real time to the... Uh, Fuel world, fuel world monitor, so the homeowner could be looking at the roof, and if he sees anything interesting, he can tell the pilot to uh, to go back and take a look. If you look down at the bottom right of the display, you'll see the two vertical bars. That's the pause button. Um, if you push that on the iPad, the drone will stop wherever it's at and just hover. Uh, that can be useful if you see something interesting on the roof and you just want to take a look at it for a few seconds. The drone has a GoPro camera on it and it's shooting high def video um, of the roof and it's also taken a high def still every five seconds. So we sped up the video here because uh, to save some time. So we're approaching the end of the uh, waypoints. GPS attitude. So the pilot has then taken over control of the uh, drone himself. And so let's go ahead and take some look at the actual footage that was shot from the drone. While we, we were shooting this video, the neighbor came up and talked to us. And he asked us to, uh, to drone his roof when we were done. And it's actually uh, fortunate that he did that because there was a lot of damage on his roof. And we'll show that later. This roof that's being shot had virtually no damage or no issues that we could see. But as you can see, the video is very detailed. It's very easy to see if there's any damage. Since this roof is somewhat, uh, it's not very interesting, we're going to go ahead and speed it up and uh, so we can look at the, uh, the roof quickly and then get to the neighbor's roof. Okay, first we'll show some uh, video of the drone itself that obviously was taken from the ground. So the drone is now flying autonomously, uh, flying the grid pattern, and the 
pilot is just on the ground watching it, making sure that everything is going as planned. And if necessary, he can uh, take control of it just by flipping a switch on the transmitter. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, the next door neighbor asked us to uh, get photos of his roof when we were done. So it only took us a few minutes to reprogram the waypoints via the iPad right there on the spot. And there were uh, lots of issues. So um, we'll show Attitude. you the, the drone flying uh, the route very quickly. And then we'll actually show you the roof. GPS. We determined the, uh, the correct altitude for this roof was about 55 feet, so that's what we programmed in uh, before we uh, downloaded the program to the drone. So the entire time to do this roof inspection was less than probably 10 minutes. That includes uh, programming the, uh, the route via waypoints. GPS attitude. So now let's take a look at this roof and uh, see how many problems you can spot. Obviously, I will point out the obvious ones. So there's a broken tile right there. Another broken tile. Another broken tile. Oh, there's a broken tile there to the left. Another one. Another one. It's interesting that both of these houses were built about the same time. Another broken tile there. Actually, they're less than one month apart, and they're only about four years old. Here are some of the high-def stills that uh, the drone was taking. So, just showing you how Kind of, what kind of level of detail you can get. More broken tiles. More broken tiles. Another one to the right there. It's very interesting that there are so many dislodged or broken tiles in all areas of the roof. There's another one, and another one, and another one. So if you were keeping count, I think I counted about 26 
broken or dislodged tiles. So this is a very good example of how a drone can be used to take a look at a concrete roof which you cannot get up and walk on. Um, so in conclusion, we hope this video has been entertaining and you can appreciate some of the interesting and useful things that drones can do. Um, of course, drones must be used when the weather and surrounding environment is safe. They're not appropriate for all jobs and like any tool must be used intelligently. In order to use a drone for commercial reasons, a business must have a 333 waiver from the FAA. Uh, my company, which is Mile High Drone Services, can assist you in getting this waiver if you want. And if you do, please go to our website, www.milehighdroneservices.com. Thank you.